In the last video, we solved this differential equation, the Schrodinger equation, which is the wave equation for, for waves of matter, for this case of the particle in a box. And we found that, that the wave functions actually looked like something very familiar, just, just sine functions with, with different values of n or different, a different number of bumps, so an integer number of, of bumps along the way. Now in this video, I want to use this requirement on k and relate, relate k to the energy to, to find out what, what we can find out about the energy in this system. So I'll go down here and I'll, I'll write, so I'll rewrite this equation with our with our, our wave function that we found inside of substituted in for this this general general symbol for it. So I'll get minus two times the mass times the energy divided by h bar squared times our wave function, which is a this constant a, and I'll I'll Probably at the end of this video, I'll mention what A is. But for now, for now, in solving for the energies, A A doesn't A doesn't play a role. Sine of k times x equals the second derivative of our wave function with respect to x. Second derivative with respect to x of our wave function. I've chosen the wrong color, so A is red. A is red times our wave function, or or the derivative of our wave function, sine of k times x. And so when we take the the derivative <coughs> of the sine function, we get a cosine function, and then we have to do the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of what's inside. And then, so that ends up being we multiply by k, right? So the first derivative, we end up with cosine k times the cosine of kx. And then when we take the second derivative, we get we get the derivative of cosine is, is negative sine. So we get that, that the, the overall overall effect is we get our wave function back multiplied by negative k. And I guess I should write that down, so I'll, I'll pause and write that down. And so you can visualize what I've just said. So, so these, these expressions that have just appeared are, are saying that the first derivative we get a cosine and, and a factor of k, and the second derivative we go back to sine but we get a negative sine and another factor of k. So, so this, this equals this this right hand side equals this left hand side. And now that all of our derivatives are taken care of, we can just cancel out these the things that appear on both sides. And those are the things that appear on both sides are sine of kx. These are just the functions, so we can divide both sides by these and they cancel. And also the a's, the a's cancel. And we end up with I should show this, we end up with minus or negative 2 times the mass times the energy over h bar squared equals negative k squared. And so we can we can cancel out these negative signs. So these are both both pluses now. We've multiplied both sides by negative 1. And now we'll solve for e. We'll solve for e. We get that e equals h bar squared over 2m times k squared. K squared, and I've I've made the mistake of using a slightly different color again, but but then if we if we use this requirement on k that we found earlier, that k equals some integer of pi over l, we get we get that e equals h bar squared and then k equals so we can I can't fit them both in the screen at once but pi
pi squared goes in the top, so I'm just squaring k. This is k, I'm just yeah, k equals n times pi over l. So we can look at it as we as we substitute. So square the pi over 2m, the square of l, l squared times n squared. So this is also something that belongs in a box. And so what does this mean here? It means that, that since n can take on any integer value, and it can only be integer values, e has a, a discrete discrete number of, of values. It can't be, so it can be this function if n equals 1, or, or this, this constant, whatever this constant equals. It can be this, or, or if n equals 2, it can be 4 times this, or if n equals 3, it can be 9 times this, but it can't be values in between. So we have this, 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 this spectrum of, of energies that are allowed in this box. So if we, we draw the energies, so we can say that this is our n equals 1 energy. We can draw this, this line here. This is our n equals 1 energy. And then our n equals 2 energy will be somewhere around here. And I'm drawing this with an arbitrary scale. But then, but then they'll be spaced even greater. So this is our n equals 3 energy. And, and so they scale with the square of n. And then I could, could keep going up and keep drawing things, keep drawing energy levels higher and higher. But, but the thing I want to I want to want to show is that, or or the point I want to make is that, say the particle is in is in this energy state. It's it's living in its wave function, is 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 the n equals three wave function. If it wants to lose energy, it has to go all the way down to to the n equals two wave function, and it can't it can't stop in between and rest. It it just just jumps straight to this this other this other wave function or this other energy. So so that so that actually explains the the spectrum that that we see coming out of atoms. The different so so when this happens and and we're getting a little ahead of ourselves but if this if this transition occurs and I'm erasing as I talk which is unfortunate but so if this happens then then energy has to go out right energy is conserved so it comes out in the form of light it comes out in the form of light light or a photon if we want to to use if we want to treat it as a particle and this is a is a, a simplified picture of how a laser actually works. So there are these different energy levels, and 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 you get and you get electrons in those cases changing changing energy levels. And and since they can only shoot out one type of energy at once, you get this laser light coming out that that is is one wavelength. And and we'll talk a lot more about about that kind of thing in in future videos. But I just want to make this point that. That these energy levels are are there are only certain allowed energy levels, and we've solved this for for the case of a particle in a box. But but any other situation that a particle can be in, it will have it will follow a similar differential equation. It might have a different a different potential energy function, and it might have different boundary conditions. But but overall, this this feature that the energies are there are only certain allowed energies. It's something that 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 happens in in really every quantum mechanical system, or or, or most of them. We talk about strange ones, but we won't we won't talk about those at least for a very long time. Well, well, that's that's not important. But but this this is something that pops up over and over again in many systems if you analyze them as if matter is a wave. And I've just remembered that. That I need to to address what A is, since I promised to you that that I would address what it is. So A is just some factor that multiplies our wave function, that to, that 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 governs how big this wave function is. And the 
the um, and, and if we remember what our wave function means is is the probability amplitude or or if we're not being precise about it just to think just just intuitively or, or or conceptually about what this is it's just the probability that a a wave will or that a particle will exist at a certain spot probability of finding it there so so a a is called a normalization factor and that a is normalization normalization to run out of room normalization normalization. And all that means is it's just it just has to be something it has to have a certain value so that if we know there's one particle in here when we add up all the probabilities of all the different of all the different spots we know that that the probability has to equal one because if there's one particle and we look everywhere in this box we have to find one particle and if we if a is some other value we might say we we find two particles and that that just doesn't make any sense. We only put one particle in this box to begin with, and we're not we're not creating or destroying particles here. We're just we're just scaling this wave function so that it makes sense that when we look inside the box, we know that we'll only get we'll only find one particle. So so oftentimes this is just this and this never this never affects the energy. So so oftentimes people will sort of just ignore it. But, but it is important to know it's there and, and what its function is. So, so that's what that's what A is. And so, so back to this part, this point about the, the the quantum mechanical systems only having certain allowed energies. If we look at a classical system, the the allowed energies are a continuum. It can any any two energies, there's a value of energy in between that 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 the particle is allowed to have and so so this this is what explains some of the interesting experiments people have done where 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 it looks like things have to be somehow this way and and all of this comes from the fact that that we're treating matter as a wave and we're solving a wave equation which is the Schrodinger equation so so the first thing that you should know about quantum mechanics if you intend to study quantum mechanics is everything you're doing comes from the fact that we're treating matter like a wave and that and that results in these these discrete energy levels which which come from the fact which is just like a classical system with waves where where there are only certain allowed wave functions and so so hopefully you by the end of this playlist you have you have a good understanding of of the basic idea of quantum mechanics and and the the important things the the most prevalent the most prevalent things that that the, that have physical significance that come out of treating matter as a wave and and hopefully you've enjoyed this playlist and and learned something or learned if you've learned one thing it should be the what i just said matter is waves matter is also a wave and that leads to discrete energy levels and those have all kinds of interesting consequences in different in different situations so i will see you in the next playlist